Welcome back to Geek Layer. Today uh, we are having a look on the Xbox Series X console through Game Pass, Fuga, Melodies of Steel. Um, the reason we're having a look at this one is if we just jump across to Game Pass itself and have a bit of a squeeze at the games coming to uh, Game Pass. And you can see there on the 11th, so uh, tomorrow, Fuga, Melodies of Steel 2, uh, which I did have a bit of interest in, so... Uh, Went and had a look, and as it turns out, the game number one is actually on uh, Game Pass as well. So I've put uh, probably uh, a couple of hours into it. Uh, now it's a JRPG, side-scrolling uh, RPG, which is a bit different, but what we'll do is, uh, I think I've done most of that, that I have. So we'll continue the adventure. So. It, it, there's two two elements to it and you'll see on the screen here so chapter four as we uh, start off but essentially it revolves around a group of kids that uh, you know in essence it's a I guess uh, a fictional or a stylized world that sort of yeah, so it sort of mimics uh, or takes elements from essentially World War II. So uh, it's set in basically what you'd describe as France. And uh, within that, uh, you start off in a little small town. Most of the town's been taken by the uh, enemies there who, in essence, are stylized towards the Germans, I guess you'd, you'd have to say. And you'll see some of that with... The, with um, the characterization so you basically play as anthrop anthra i can't even spit it out um human-like animals is the <laughs> best way to describe it um so there is elements there's battle elements and then within the battle elements you you can see on screen the uh the big tank and essentially that's your weapon um and then each of the kids that you've got take up sections in that and that's how you attack and there's little intermissions in between where you actually go inside it. You can control your characters, uh, increase their relationships with each other, um, do little chores that help you get items and equipment. So we'll continue on. And you see with the, um, you see the art style is actually quite, uh, quite striking as well and a little bit different, but uh, there's English text in it, but there is only Japanese and uh, French. Uh, speaking languages, they're the only ones that you can use. Plein d'espoir, mais aussi d'appréhension, les enfants furent confrontés une nouvelle fois à ce qu'ils avaient pris auparavant pour une illusion. Et ils ne font pas. La voix de la silhouette rappelait celle d'une petite fille. Il voulait savoir qui elle était et pourquoi il ne devait pas se battre. Mais la fillette ne faisait que répéter les mêmes mots. La détermination des enfants, pourtant endurcie par les combats, se mit à vaciller au son de ses paroles. Le doute s'était installé en eux, et ils n'avaient désormais plus le cœur à affronter l'ennemi qui s'approchait. So as we sort of go into the battle as well, one of the um, there's basically uh, an attack as well, and you learn this fairly early on um, that is will basically destroy any enemy on the screen, enemy any enemy on the screen. But what it does do will sacrifice the life of one of the kids in it. So um, if you end up doing that, and you have to do it as part of the tutorial, well, then you sort of rewind back to it um, beforehand. But it, as you're progressing through the game, if you get to that point where you, you have no other option or um, you're struggling to beat an enemy, then realistically the only option at that point is, um, is to sacrifice one of the kids. And once you use them, you know, clearly you can't bring them back. So 
we'll have a look here as we go and you can see up on the screen that's sort of the map that you that you take and you work through um, and this is the intermission section I was talking about so um, you get a group of quests that you can sort of work through uh, with each of the characters uh, you can harvest items work your way around there Whoop. Uh, and you can see what each one that wants to do. So you can see the, the scrap fishing there is at the back. So if we change our character to hack. And then we duck across back out. You can actually do uh, fishing there. Uh, you can upgrade that as well. So we've got enough to be able to upgrade it. No, we don't. So we'll do level two. And you can get items by but essentially fishing off the back of the, the tank there as well. So you'll see successful, a couple of items there. And that increases your experience level as well. So you've done two in essence there that wanted to do the fishing. So you then, uh, there we go, we want to expand the co-op farm. So let's switch over to this one we go down and this is so you can find these as you're sort of going around uh, items as well so we go to the farm let's see if we have enough to expand the farm no we don't so can't do that as it stands but what we can do is actually plant items in there so it'll take until the next intermission for those to uh, be able to be harvested and then into your into your inventory there as well so again we'll have a look can't do girls only pajama party so I reckon who's the other one to sleep so I've seen that one before but what we might do is switch over here, go up, and then we'll just double check because there was another one that actually wanted to sleep as well, which was there. So we might dormitory, and you can expand it out. I think we'll do that right now because I want to save some of that stuff, but we can do one, two, take a rest. So this is also useful for as you're progressing through, if your character gets knocked out or, or what have you, then uh, you can send them off to bed and it will uh, revive them in essence. So we've done another two there. Uh, tomato juice, so we'd have to go to the, this area here is where the, the kitchen essentially see if we can make some tomato juice no so what we might have to do is expand we can't do that just yet so can't do that one now the other thing you're to take notice of you've got the action points up in the top left corner so you've only got a certain amount per uh, time that you have the intermission so the only one we've got is to upgrade the the reactor and if we'll have to see whether we've actually got enough items to be able to do that and here's the workshop, so uh, I don't expand that just yet. So this is where you can upgrade your weaponry and the reactor as well, you can see there. So we've got enough to upgrade that. We will do that, which increases the amount of uh, SP that you can use in battle. And there we go, increase. And we'll see, so we can't upgrade any of those without upgrading the workshop itself. So let's jump into that. And let's go back and see if we can upgrade some of these weapons. So uh, yes we can for the cannon. Yes, we can for the grenade launcher. And we've still got enough on the machine gun as well. 
And let's see if we've got enough to do the armor. Yes, we do. So we're going to increase the armor's essentially your hit points as you're going through battle. So that's that done. That will also upgrade. Oh, took off another quest. Now the other thing you do, we've only got one action point now left, so what we might do is, and this is one of the things you can have to, you can um, converse with the other characters depending on who you are, and what it, do, what it will do is uh, increase their affinity rate, uh, so they then develop extra abilities and uh, work together better in, in terms of your battle. So here's the first battle, as you can see now, as we go into it, you can see the enemy, so there's armor three, and then you've got the two blue icons underneath it. So that relates to the enemy. So if we go into the, uh, the enemy's weakness, I should say, or what you should be using against them. So you can see uh, the front one there is machine gun. That one is the cannon. And that one is the machine gun as well. So um, if we go back to the battle, you can see that you want to have uh, essentially the machine guns because they're the ones that will um, drop for each one of those you drop down and then and you can see at the top that it's actually got who's next in battle so if we can knock out all those what it will do is push them back so it gives us more opportunities but we need to knock some of that armor out as well because we're not doing a lot of damage there so you can see there we've hit it twice there it's been delayed uh, what we'll do because the cannon won't or sorry the grenade launcher there won't have a, a massive effect so we'll do another piercing shot drop that down and then we'll start with the machine gun there we go and you can see when they then are able to have their turn those two items come back or the two blue um, pieces come back that, there you go, so we've delayed, defend, and we'll knock it out there. And then based on how you go, in terms of how many turns you've taken, as you can see their damage receiving technique just relates to make sure you're using the right um, weapons I guess. You get an overall rank and then what that does, you can see on the top right side there, times 1.5, so your experience um, multiplies depending on how well you do overall in battle. Pick up some stuff there. So then you'll get to this section as a pass. So you can do a normal route, which is um, you know effectively just playing through the game. This there is also more difficult routes occasionally, um, but that will end up giving you uh, some more um, items and and some other stuff as well or you can go the safe route there so you can see there's basically you've got no battle there but we've only got we can go this way because we've only got one battle and there's only one um one wave of enemies to take out so you can see there uh probably the best solution there would be one there one there that knocks both of those back a little bit and then we'll defend with that one because again We've got the blue items there. And so uh, it does. It's funny because it, you know, we're up to chapter four at this stage. Um, but as you progress through this line, so each each chapter is basically this, this line of a route that you've got to take and. Um, you know, defeat enemies as you're going and, you know, pick up items, have your intermission, go through that sort of stuff. But what you'll find uh, is that the further you get along the track, even though the first couple of battles might be a little bit easier, um, that the further you progress, the more um, enemies you've got to fight at one time there'll be multiple waves that you've got to fight through and on top of all that you start using and burning through your your SP which is your, your it's, you know, depends how you ask, skill points, special powers, whatever you want to call it uh, but that'll start draining so you've got to be careful with that 
in terms of how much of that you're using as you're traveling along. So we replenish some, some there. Jump across this way, you can see some of the cutscenes. And, and you can see there in the in the background, a um, bit hard to see, but it'll come through shortly. Um, basically, the enemies are designed to, you know, mimic or represent uh, the Germans essentially in World War Two or World War One, depending on uh, how you want to look at it. Après hésitation, la fillette comprit que les enfants à bord n'étaient pas des ennemis. Ennemis au but. And you say, I mean, they're not really trying harder. This is Burman soldier. They're not. Uh, they're not really trying to hide what uh, or who they're supposed to represent. So here we go, we've got a uh, couple of different ones here. So what we might want to do at this point is we use one machine gun on that one, but then we want to switch out our characters that I was talking about before. So you've got two yellow ones there, so we want to use uh, those ones there. And when you do switch through, it'll give you the warning that you've got to play through three turns before uh, you can switch them over again, which is Generally, not um, not too difficult to work through. It's uh, probably going to turn before I can't knock that out, unfortunately. One down, and then again. So we've delayed that one delay that one as well just to push that back and you can see they've now been pushed both behind the yellow uh, attack characters again which will um, then allow us to have a couple of maneuvers in before they get another turn in so grenade launcher again and so we, we can now utilize three of these and you can you might have seen as we were going through it there, you can uh, you can see on the left hand side your reserve. So there's obviously a lot more characters that you can recruit and add into the uh, into the mix in your party as well. Les enfants invitèrent la jeune fille à se réfugier à l'intérieur du Taranis. Merci. Salut. Yo. Salut. Coucou. Hein? Salut. Salut. China avait été détenue avec sa famille dans un camp pour Felineco. Elle avait réussi à s'enfuir avec un garçon du camp, mais ils avaient malheureusement été séparés en chemin. Désorientée pendant sa fuite et encore sous le choc, China ne se souvenait pas de... Les enfants lui expliquèrent qu'ils se battaient pour sauver leur famille. Elles aussi tenues prisonnières. So you can see through, you know, as we're playing through it, some of the storyline, it's actually quite compelling and, and um, you know, it sort of tugs at the heartstrings a little bit because it, essentially it's a bunch of children that are just trying to survive a war and, and doing the best they can. Ils proposèrent à China de les rejoindre sans lui mentir sur les dangers qui les attendaient. Mmh? Oh... So 
So there we go, we've got uh, one more to join the crew. So again, the normal route up the top where you're gonna looks like you're gonna have uh, three battles up the top and maybe some more on the end or the safe route, which is you know one that you got to battle, then you got another route that you can take there. So it looks, you know, just judging by that, it sort of looks like you potentially can get through that with just one battle. Which you know, I suppose at the end of the day, it's um, it's up to you how you want to play the game. If you're struggling with it, it obviously gives you an option uh, of how to work through it. So essentially, that's a bit of a look at uh, Fuga, Melodies of Steel. As I said, uh, the second game uh, is on Game Pass releasing uh, as of tomorrow. And uh, both games will then now be on uh, Game Pass. So if you've got uh, passing interest in uh, JRPGs or RPGs in general, I would recommend it. It's uh, got a, a fairly decent storyline. The combat is, uh, you know, a little different to most RPGs, where you you've got different characters in your in your crew that you can utilise their skills and such. But it's also um, utilising that big battle tank, um, as you can see there. And you know, after three or four hours of playing through the story, I'm, I'm more than happy to keep going through it. I'll will finish this one off and then have a look at jumping into number two and see what the differences are there. So, uh, as I said, that's a little bit of a look at Fuga Melodies of Steel on the Xbox Series X. We're playing it on today um, and through Game Pass there. Uh, thanks for joining us. And what else can you do with the channel? Like and subscribe it. You'll never miss it. Thank <laughs> you.